Distros like OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, Arch, Void, Gen2 are all considered rolling release distributions. And when the model is implemented properly, unlike some of the cases with Arch Linux, it allows for applications to be far, far more cutting edge than you'd have on something that's a static release, something like, say, Ubuntu or Debian Stable or Fedora, things like that. It's not always going to be the case, but having far more release cycles allows you to have more times to update the applications. But fairly often you'll see people say things like, Arch Linux is a bleeding edge distro. Void is a bleeding edge distro. This is a bleeding edge distro. That is a bleeding edge distro. And why is this random application out of date? Arch Linux, Void, Gen2, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, any of the other rolling releases out there, they're not bleeding edge distros. They never were and they never will be because that's a terrible idea. And to the best of my knowledge, no sane rolling release describes itself as a bleeding edge distro. It might use the term cutting edge, but those do actually mean different things. Almost nobody out there would actually want to run something that is truly bleeding edge. Typically, rolling releases will share one thing in common. They're going to try to ship the absolute latest or as close to latest stable release as is physically possible, because they want people to have a good experience on their distribution. So because they're shipping the latest stable packages, doesn't this make it bleeding edge? Well, no, that makes it cutting edge. Bleeding edge is ahead of those stable packages. In software, the best way to look at cutting edge is cutting edge is the latest build of the software that you're ready to give a version number. So this is version 1.1, this is version 1.2. This is the version that you have tested and you're considering is ready to ship to the users. Maybe you're not gonna call it production ready, but for the purpose of shipping it to your users, you're considering it production ready in some sense of the term. This isn't the version that you know won't build. This isn't the version sitting on some random Git branch that's not ready to be merged into the master branch because there's still work that needs to be done. But Bleeding Edge might be. Unless it's the final version of that application, when you release a new version of software, you don't just stop developing there. And it's very likely that when you release a new version, there might be extra commits already available not included in that version. Bleeding Edge is the absolute latest version of the application. This version might just be some random commit in the Git repo. You have no idea if it builds properly. You have no idea if it's buggy. No one has really tested it. All they're certain of is the code is there. Maybe you do have some automated testing process, but you haven't tested it enough or developed enough extra patches around it to consider what's being built there the next version of the application yet. At some point it will be, but right now it's just a commit in the Git repo. Now there's not just a set, this is where Bleeding Edge starts and this is where Bleeding Edge ends. There's sort of a gradient here. You can have things that are more Bleeding Edge or more Cutting Edge than what you'd see on something like, say, Ubuntu. It's not like if you're one commit behind the latest commit, now that's not Bleeding Edge altogether. It's still more Bleeding Edge than what you'd see on a typical daily use distro. But if we're going to give it a single term, I don't think it makes sense to describe something like Arch Linux as bleeding edge, when there are many cases where Arch Linux is just at the latest stable version or even a couple versions behind in the case of their C toolchain a couple months back. But there are distros or package streams on distros which are more bleeding edge than what you would typically want to daily drive, even though some people do go and do so. Things like Debian Unstable, or Arch Linux Testing, Gen2 Testing, Fedora Unstable. All of these serve a fairly similar purpose. Basically, it's for testing the latest and maybe not greatest. If it was greatest, it would already be brought over to the main distribution. Here is where you go and test these packages before they get into the daily use system to make sure they're actually good. And sure, you can have a perfectly fine experience daily driving, Gen2 testing, or Debian unstable. But when a package is in this stream, it is intended to be buggy. It's not intended to be daily driven, but you can do that if you really want to. There are even some distros that are based on these streams if you want to take it to the next level. But let's say you want to take it as extreme as possible and have a completely bleeding edge system. Everything on the system is the most up-to-date version 
what would that actually look like? Every single application on your entire system, whether it's your bootloader, whether it's some random user space software like your terminal, your browser, whether it's your kernel, every single piece of software on your entire system would need to be the latest commit in the Git repo, or whatever source management system is being used by that application. And let's just assume you have a supercomputer that can instantly compile every application you need. Because if you didn't have that, you would need to be compiling code every single second of every single day. Obviously, the kernel is a fairly big compilation project, but your browser is massive as well. And let's just say you have 300 applications on your system, which is a fairly small amount. That's still enough to keep you busy all the time and nothing would ever get done. And that's the scenario in a perfect world. What's far more likely to happen is random applications that you need to use just stop working. Now, projects like the Linux kernel are fairly well-managed projects. Generally, when something gets submitted to the Linux kernel, it's not going to be something that straight up stops it from compiling or breaks some absolute basic feature but sometimes things like that are going to slip through. And less well-managed projects, I can say this from first-hand experience of writing these myself, sometimes you just commit things that don't compile or break something and you don't have any sort of automated testing process to make sure that doesn't happen. And all of those applications are gonna break constantly. On the bright side, whenever there is any zero-day exploit, you are going to be the first person to suffer from that, but also the first person to recover before anybody outside of the project even realizes there was a problem or a patch to the problem. Also, get rid of the seed that dependencies are going to start breaking. There's a lot of applications out there updated at a much slower pace that also expect that everything they're depending on sort of updates at that pace as well. And like with the migration to, I think it was Python 3.10, I want to say, where a lot of things started breaking, that's going to happen with basically everything on your system. If you want to have a small taste of this in sort of a controlled environment, go and install Arch Linux and start installing all of your applications from the AUR and make sure every single one of them is a dash git package. And let me know how that experience goes. From my experience using Arch, and this is the reason why I typically don't use dash git packages, it's going to work one day and some random day you're going to do an update and it just stops working. But ultimately, this video is just me being pedantic about the usage of bleeding edge and cutting edge. I could just not care about it and let the terms sort of fade into obscurity and merge together or whatever's going to happen. But I think when people say that Arch is a bleeding edge distro, it sort of gives people a false idea about what they're going to get. And I think it's part of the reason why people still think that using Arch Linux is going to be a really unstable experience where they're constantly going to have to fix stuff. Most of the time, that's not what happens. Unless you do something yourself, it doesn't really break that often. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think that cutting edge and bleeding edge both have distinct meanings or does it just not really matter and they're sort of interchangeable? I would love to know. And if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's only better paid linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>